Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Mando Lessons Live. My name is Baron. Hope you're all doing well. Whatever time of day it is, I hope you got a nice beverage in front of you. I got a beautiful cup of tea this morning. Ready for a couple people from Ireland. I'm drinking berries. That's my that's my go-to tea. Uh, who do we got in the chat? Welcome all. We have James, Joe, Jim, <laughs> a lot of J's right up, <laughs> right off the bat. Kevin, Ignis, Alan, William, Lewis, Julia, Geroid, Batal, Patrick, Andrew. Excellent. Great to see you all, James. Wonderful. A lot of J's in the chat today. I like to see it. Ant-Man. Good to have you here, as always. All right. Let's see. Okay, there's already some good stuff going on in the chat. Some talk about Texas. I think this is coming in from Greece. Welcome, welcome. A couple folks from Ireland. Jim asks, is that Old Time Mandolin album on your website? Yep. If you go to my website and... I'll just make sure I'm saying the right words. Mando lessons. If you go to store, there's the drop down there, shirts and merch, and then music. And you click on music, and it's in there. You got the Solo Claw Hammer album, then my album with Noah, and then Old Time. Oh, I got to turn that little bleeping off. Uh, old Time Mandolin, both in audio and vi video form, and then my albums with. My band, Velocipede. All right, let's see. Whoa, nope, don't need to ban anyone. My computer's got a life of its own here. Uh, Lewis says, hello from the Starbucks drive through in Evansville. We'll be listening and driving today, heading to the Open Jam at the Bluegrass Museum. All right, well, drive safe and have fun at the jam. Happy fall from Vermont. Yeah, it's a beautiful day out here in Oregon as well. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he says, grab me a flat white. Yeah, I'll also, I'll take a, I'll take a, a cortado. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Uh, Keith says, evening from not so sunny Cornwall. Fair enough. Uh, we just had about a week straight of rain in true Oregon fashion, Portland, Oregon. And, uh, but now we got a couple nice days for some trick or treating. So happy, happy Halloween to everyone! Uh, let me know if you're trick or treating, or what your, if you were trick or treating, what your costume would be. And uh, yeah, I was. Last night I went to a, a Halloween party, and today going to another one, and I am a cowboy hot dog. I got a full size hot dog suit. And a big giant foam, like 10 gallon cowboy hat, some cowboy boots. I don't know that it's really a thing, but it is now. That's what Halloween is all about. All right, more folks coming in on the chat. If this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, say hello. Great to, great to see you all. Uh, the way these work, if you're unfamiliar, is it's a Q&A. So throw the questions out there. No question is too advanced, no question too simple. It's all fair game. I'll do my best to answer them. I'll also play some tunes, like that first one, which is the Lilting Banshee, a tune that I definitely had to look up and remember how to play, because that is the tune of the week. And we're going to play it all together. Great Irish jig in the key of A minor. We got Ryan. We got Keith. We got Morgan. John. Siddharth. Kyle, Sherry, Reed, Ersanos, Denise, how oh, all of them, everybody's coming in now. Great. All right, let me catch up with the chat again here. Ottawa, good to have some Canada power in here. And BC as well, a lot of good. All right, all kinds of Canadian folks here today glad to see it <laughs> the, the baby fish cheeks yeah the you, you missed the mustache i decided yesterday i would have a mustache with my cowboy hot dog costume just to add another layer but i'm not really a mustache person so it was like a 
an eight hour mustache. Um, and then there, you can't just put the beard back on. So I had to come, the beard had to come off entirely. What's up with the oval holes in our good eye? So yeah, this is a mandolin I got. I've been doing some lessons with in, with it recently. This is an Ellis oval hole, just like my F hole Ellis. Um, this one's from 2010. This one's from 2009. And uh, I've been after one of these for a while, and one popped up used. And uh, I just love the I love the sound of a of an oval hole. So. This, uh, it plays exactly like the, the LSF hole that I have, so uh, it's, it's a really easy transition to make versus kind of getting used to some of the old Gibson oval holes, which I also love, um, but I'm really enjoying this thing lately. But good eyes on catching that. All right, Ryan's still working on King of the Fairies. That thing is, that is a long tune with a lot of parts and a lot of notes. All right, Donna's first time. Good to have you here. Patrick says, I've recently been pushed to learning Lilting Banshee into Lark in the Morning. Do you know how Lark in the Morning would work with Lilting? That sounds good. I can't remember how Lark in the Morning goes right now. But I'm going to look it up. Where does it go? Excuse me while I look at my phone on the live stream. Do I have Lark in the Morning on my website? Nope. <laughs> Let's see. Uh... Lark in the morning tune. Okay, how's it go? Oh, I'm in the morning I think a four part tune unless I'm getting it mixed up with something else but uh, I bet that would work well maybe lilting banshee nice dark and minor into uh, lark in the morning
<laughs> That's a bit of a brain workout here in the in the early morning. Well, <laughs> the early morning of ten o'clock. But yeah, that just, I think that would work well. And you know, the more confident you are with the switch, the better it'll sound. So I don't think that sounded particularly great. <laughs> I mean, it sounded good. It was a it's a good tune mix. I would just need to practice like how to. I don't really play either of those tunes a whole lot. I usually just like follow them if they come up in a session. So I'm not used to like starting them and switching between them and using them as a set. But it's a nice set, and if I work on that transition. I think that's got a lot of promise. Great idea. You know, I think in, in general, kind of like building sets, like you just got to try stuff, um, you know, throw throw a bunch of tunes together and see what comes out. Sometimes it'll surprise you. And after a while, you know, you, you try to put a hundred different tunes together, you'll start to get a sense of like, oh, what's going to work? Like, it's, it's, there's some like key changes that just sound nice like G to D or A minor to D major A minor to A major like all the different ways that different sets come together and kind of how the keys work um, and then there's just some tunes that like always sound good like uh, often there's a little kind of interesting thing at the start so like Louis Sear is a great uh, Quebec tune um, and it starts <laughs> that big low G and you can kind of go into it from anything because it starts so epically not really in tune um, so kind of just play around with sets if you and don't discount something if it doesn't like work right off the bat good enough um, you know keep trying it or like sometimes I'll like if there's a bunch of tunes Put them together along one way and say, ah, you know, in general, you kind of want the, the energy to go up over time. And, you know, I can do a little, like, oh, down and then up, up, up. But you generally want to end the tune or end a set with, like, a little more energy, energy than you started. So just throw stuff together, mix up the combination, see what works. And you'll start to get a, you know, a, a sense of kind of what's going to work and what's not. And I'm always happy to just, like, if a tune pops into my head, give it a try and... If it works out great, awesome. If it doesn't, then there's just a little moment of like, oh, this is awkward, and then you're into the second tune, and it sounds good. And you get to know that and kind of keep that in mind for the next time. Nova Scotia as well. All right. And Edmonton. And Sisters, Oregon. Howdy, neighbor. James says, I shaved down to a mustache for a party and felt uncomfortable all night. Yeah. I didn't, I kind of forgot about it pretty quick. I never, like, have a mustache. I, um, but I kind of forgot about it pretty quick until I would, like, put my hand on my face and be like, oh, <laughs> that's right. I guess it helps that I had, like, a, a hot dog costume on, so that was sort of the main thing. <laughs> it's, 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 you kind of break through some barriers with the, the full body hot dog costume and the, the mustache just becomes a, an accessory. <laughs> Hey, all right. Bill Monroe is a costume. That's a good idea. James says, do you have any suggestions for finger dexterity? I'm having trouble reaching all the frets. My favorite, this is a question from James. You know, why not? I, I got this, uh, this ability to put these comments on the screen and I never do. Um, so yeah. Uh, I do. I think one of the things, there's a, a set of exercises on jazzmando.com called FFCP. They're also on my website uh, if you look up FFCP. And it's got all these great, um, I'll, I'll start a little simpler than that actually. One thing that's really helpful is I like to do this exercise, which is first finger on the second fret and then pinky on the seventh fret. And see if you can get that to work without moving your thumb, you know, rather than going like, you know, having your whole hand shift. If you can find, it takes a little bit, it's a really a technique thing more than anything else. So, you know, go back through my technique lessons, get as comfortable as you can, and then see if you can get 
on all four sets of strings. That second fret and seventh fret, pointer and pinky. That's a great little exercise just to teach your hand where it can be, kind of where your thumb position can be to reach those, and the more relaxed you can be while doing that, the better. And that'll get your hand into a nice position for playing. And then um, some great exercises are what I was talking about, that FFCP, where essentially they've just got you running through a bunch of scales in closed position. so you can move it up. And then they do kind of scale patterns. <laughs> Been a little while. So that's, that's, a, that's like one of the, that's a really kind of finger buster exercise that'll really get your fingers moving. And I wouldn't recommend doing it, you know, you, you want to be nice and relaxed when you do it. Don't do that for like 20 minutes. Do it for like a minute and then shake your hand out and try again. Um, but it's easy to get real cramped up doing those because they're so kind of finger intensive. But the more you do them, the better your uh, kind of stamina will get to do those. After a year of playing alone, I had the opportunity to play with my sister-in-law on guitar. We had fun playing tunes off your site. Awesome. That's from Joe. Yeah, it's so fun to play with other people. I've recently, you know, recently in the last couple months, gotten out and met some folks out here that play some music, and nothing beats getting the opportunity to play with somebody else. Ryan says, what are the pros and cons of owning multiple instruments? Great question. Uh, do you find you sometimes feel rusty because you're spreading your time on multiple instruments? I think it can go any number of ways, really. Um, I think, so, I think you could maybe think about it two different ways. And this is also just like my own, oh, there's so, this is so, this is a great question. And I feel like there's so many angles you can look at it. Like, I play a lot of different kinds of instruments, as you can probably tell. But that said, most of them are like fretted instruments that kind of work mechanically the same way as the mandolin. They're just different scale lengths and different tunings, like a guitar or a banjo. Although banjo you're, is a different right hand, but the left hand's the same. Um, so there's a lot of kind of shared physical movement um, between all, all the most of the instruments that I play. And so I think those can all actually kind of, you know, playing. I started out playing mandolin, and then I picked up guitar for a little bit. And it was like, wow, these frets are so far apart. And then I would go back to mandolin and be like, hey, this thing feels kind of fast because I'm not, you know, I'm not fighting the giant frets. And people will say the same thing about guitar. Coming from guitar to mandolin, they're like, how do you get your fingers on these tiny little frets? And then they go back to guitar and it's like, oh, that's comfortable. And you just learn things from playing different instruments, whether they're related or not. Because um, there's always kind of the more um, kind of just musical, straight musical aspect that isn't tied to physical technique um so playing a couple different instruments can definitely be um beneficial but then there is the fact that like you know there's only so much time in the day and do you want to focus on one or do you want to focus on more than one and you know i think part of the reason that i've i feel like mandolin is the instrument that i'm most comfortable on and i can play like the most styles of music but um, because the, the kind of technique, especially like left-hand technique and a lot of right-hand technique, except for banjo, um, happens on guitars and tenor guitars and things like that, um, I'm able to sort of have a head start picking those up. And also the fact that, you know, this is my job. I play music for a living, so I don't have like a nine-to-five job that I have to go to and like everything that comes with that, like... My job is playing music and learning to play music and different instruments. So that can it's more of a like professional priority for me as well to be able to say like, oh yeah, I can play guitar on, in your show or I'll, yeah, I'll play pedal steel or whatever it may be, banjo. 
Um, so, and so I think, you know, the time limit is real. Like, I feel like I've kind of definitely hit the wall of, like, I, I tend to play an instrument for a long time and get kind of, like, a workable technique on it so, like, I can play in tune and play up to speed. Um, and, you know, a lot of that comes from playing mandolin for 20 years. And all, so many of those skills change over. And then... But, you know, like, they're definitely, I feel like I've hit the limit where I don't really play, I haven't played five-string banjo that much lately. I've kind of fallen back off the pedal steel. Uh, I've been playing, you know, as instruments come in, like, I've just been playing this mandolin a lot. And I've been playing uh, tenor, Irish tenor banjo in an Irish session and group around town lately. Um, and so that's sort of taking over. So it's sort of, I end up playing what I'm either, like, excited about or required to play and i definitely like you know haven't i haven't been playing tenor guitar all that much i've been playing more bazooki uh so there's definitely the time limit and you know i play a little button accordion and i haven't played that very much lately um and then from you know there, there's other things like kind of instrument upkeep like i've got a drawer about this big just like full of strings <laughs> and like you know if i don't play an instrument for a year which rarely happens but like you know sometimes i take out an instrument for a gig and i'm like oh man these strings are way too old yeah like there's kind of maintenance on instruments and you know getting comfortable that's part of what i love about having feeling very grateful to have two ellises is i can get the f hole sound and I can get the oval hole sound, but like the feel of the instrument is so similar. Whereas, you know, I mostly played the F hole Ellis. Um, and then I would play Irish music on the, the Gibson oval hole. And I could do it, but it was definitely a little more tiring just because I, I didn't play it as much. Um, but now I feel like I can play this oval hole just as I have the same amount of stamina on that. So it's like learning the particular instrument. Dividing your time. There's so many different things. That's a that's a great question. And I'd be curious what other people have experienced if you play multiple instruments. Oh yeah, and then you said the same same question for multiple mandolins. So that's uh yeah. That's I think I answered all that. Lindsay from BC, good to have you here. All right, Jane was a little bit late for enjoying Lake Michigan. Hey, you gotta, you gotta get out and enjoy the world around you. I can't fault you for that. Hey, Kenneth, good morning. Andy comes in with the super chat. Thank you so much. Says, really been trying to work on chopping like Thiele in the Fox. Best I can manage is palm muting. I just can't get it to sound crisp. Yeah. I think I've got a lesson on sort of like the different ways to mute. So it's it's kind of so what uh, Andrew's talking about here is this sort of sound like so there's so many different things going on in that. Um, one is is this? I mean the chord is just one chord. Um, but the, the, you're kind of sliding into it every time. And then there's all this muting going on from a variety of different places. So some of it's palm muting, so with like your right hand. And I'm trying to not move my left hand. <laughs> I right, can see my left hand twitch because I'm so used to also throwing the left hand in. And so, so you can mute with your right hand kind of palm on the strings, and you can mute with your left hand fingers, especially with this like one finger A chord. You can mute the strings just by flopping fingers on the strings. So that'd be like. So that's no palm muting. Just left hand mute. And then you can combine them. Doesn't it? And you just get kind of a little bit of everything. You get all this cool syncopation. That style is really kind of uh, 
developed by Sam Bush listening to a lot of reggae and other kinds of music and being just a super percussive player from the get go. And then a very that's that's totally the song that like got me hooked on mandolin was that the fox off Nickel Creek's self titled album. Um, so yeah, I, I think I've got a lesson on various ways to mute, excuse me, on my website and check that out. Try to get that left hand in there. That's a great exercise. Like you can kind of figuring out ways to use that left hand as a mute when you're playing kind of. Sometimes it's more of like a roll. It, it's really kind of chord dependent. Like this one is a classic one because it's just one finger and it sets your hand up just to be able to mute. But then you do like an A chord and then you're like, okay, well I've got all the strings down. I can do more of like a chop mute. And then you find other like that classic D chord. Got to kind of figure out how to mute, left hand mute with all the different kind of chord shapes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jesus says the lark got up on the bed, the wrong side, of the wrong side of the bed this morning. Yeah, me, me too. Well, not the wrong side of the bed. I'm just still sleepy. That not really playing lark is a a dangerous combination. Ant-Man says, any thoughts on how to join in on songs you don't really know? I play with a lot of folk musicians and haven't really figured out how to jump in. That is a great question. Um, so it really, I think there's a, a number of things. Another, I'm going to get, I got to get used to uh, doing that just so people can see the, the question I'm looking at. I don't know if that's helpful for you guys or not, but uh, I'm going to try to add that in just throw that up there for a little bit um so i think one of the things is kind of listening to the kind of music you're trying to play um and really listening to it a lot so if like you know uh whatever kind of folk music you're playing let's say it's it really depends like is it old time music is it bluegrass is it irish is it a little bit of everything maybe make yourself a playlist of the kind of songs that people play and sing when you get together um you can go to these musical events and just like write start a list on a piece of paper or on your phone of like okay this song got sung this tune got played and then go home and make a playlist just so you can like have that come go through your head and the more familiar you are kind of just using your ears um passively listening to the music you'll just kind of learn where the tune goes what to expect etc and then in terms of actually putting your fingers on the instrument, I think a big thing is kind of knowing. So my, my experience is learning bluegrass, which is the first kind of music that I learned how to play. And I went, would go to bluegrass festivals, and I knew a G, a C, and a D chord, and I knew that I could pl like play those chords in the key of G, and I didn't know any other chords or how to play scales or anything or kind of melodies. So I would just wander around looking for people playing in the key of G and be like, oh yeah, it sounds like they're in G. And then I would play my G, C, and D and then they'd be like, oh, that's fun. Let's go to A. And I'd be like, see you later. And go look for another song in the key of G. And so knowing, I kind of knew, knowing what you know, like I know three chords and then kind of having listened to a lot of bluegrass and kind of being like, okay, can I get this chop? Or I couldn't really do the chop, so I was doing right hand mutes. So, but all that listening kind of gave me a sense of what the role of the mandolin was. Um, if there's other mandolins around, you can watch them and sort of see what they're doing. Use visual cues. Um, and then the more you play, kind of, you know, like you said, like how do you join in on a song you don't know? I think the first thing to do is like figure out what key it's in. Figure out like what the chord progression is. And sometimes that'll come easy. Like with bluegrass... 90% of the songs are three chord songs so you learn kind of like the three chords in a key for a half dozen different keys and you can pretty much play along with most of bluegrass and at least quarterly and so you kind of it requires like okay what keys do people normally play in and it requires a little bit of kind of reconnaissance missions of going 
to these musical events and being like, okay, these are the songs they're playing. These are the keys they're playing them in. Taking it home and saying, okay, I know that I've got to play Whiskey in the Jar in the key of A. How do I do that? And then sitting down and working on that sort of stuff by listening to recordings, figuring out what chords are in the key of A, things like that. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, but I'd say mostly like a combination of listening and then time in the seat with the mandolin, whether at home alone or just kind of going for it and trying not to like, you know, sidetrack a, a whole jam by playing, not knowing what to do and playing loud. But, you know, you can sit there and be like, okay, is this an A? Just play quietly and see if you can get the chord progression. And then melodically, I think if it's a song that I, I'm always like trying to sing, like, okay, I got the chords now. It's A, D, E, back to A. And then try to like, okay, what is the melody doing? And I'll just try to like sing, hum the melody while playing those chords. Or like, says take it and you're like oh, I don't know I don't I've never played this I usually just try to like play what I was humming <laughs> there it is and that's it that's often the hardest part is like figuring out that first note do do If you really get the melody in your head, then you can try to spice it up. By kind of having a sense of the chord progression, having a sense of the skeleton melody, and having a little bit of sense of uh, kind of chord, uh, sorry, uh, scales and kind of how to embellish too. I hope that's helpful. It's definitely like a whole bunch of different things coming together all at once. Hopefully that made some amount of sense. <laughs> Keith from Kentucky, good to have you here. James says, I do love the Celtic tradition of tying tunes together into sets. Me too. But I recently found out that it is a fairly new tradition. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is you hear like, like the whole world of like what is traditional in a lot of traditional music is pretty fluid ultimately like you know oh uh you know tenor banjo is a traditional irish musical instrument but ultimately that required banjos coming from africa to america and then america kind of developing its own four string version tenor banjo and then that getting back into irish music going back to ireland and then you have tenor banjo is like a traditional Irish music instrument or bazooki which is like something you hear a lot in Irish music which is because a bunch of Irish musicians in the late 60s 70s uh Johnny Moynihan and co went over to Greece and were like hey that's a cool instrument I'm gonna take one of those home and learn how to play tunes with it so and like you know putting tunes together whatever it may be like what we think of as like uh, new from this or, uh, kind of a tradition from the dawn of time is often a lot more modern than we think James says are you in Oregon I am in Oregon yes E minor to F sharp minor is ace oh yeah especially if you're like in the key of D and you go like D minor a good sound Brian says I've learned to play the mando through tab so far is there a trick 
to make it back to reading the notes like I do with other instruments? Great question. So this is kind of, you know, getting... There's a book out there called Standard Notation for the Tab Addicted Mandolinist. Um, I've, I've never actually read it myself, um, but I've heard great things about it, so try to look up that book. Uh, what is it called? Again, I just said the name, but it's gone again. Uh, Standard Notation for the Tab Addicted Mandolinist. Um, or just kind of, you know, take it slow and steady. Remember the note names. If you can find, like, all my music is written out. Standard notation on top, tabs on the bottom. Um, see if you can look through those and kind of make some connections. And if you already read standard notation with other instruments, it'll probably, just a little bit of kind of like a translation layer that's missing to get you from tab into standard notation. So just pick away at it and I think things will start clicking pretty quick. All right. Nice. So James says Fiddlehead did a series on YouTube about reading notes for fiddle. All right, Dan from Riverside, good to have you here. Aureli from Ireland, just finished reading the book The Baron in the Trees and listening to Cosmos Flight right after. It was the perfect music. That's, I mean, that's what happened. Was so this is a great book by uh, Italo Calvino called The Baron in the Trees that I was given because it has my name in it, <laughs> and then. Uh, I didn't read it for many years. It just got sat on the shelf. And then I read it and I was like, oh, this is a great book. It's about a kid who has an argument with his parents and goes to live in the trees and never set foot on ground again, on the ground again. Um, and then I finished reading the book and the tune Cosmo's Flight, which I think I teach on the website, uh, just kind of popped out of my fingers right after finishing it. So I named it after one of the characters in the book. Ursana says, can you explain anchor points? I keep hearing people talking about them, but I haven't heard an explanation of what it means. Ah, not a derpy question at all. Um, so, um, I think, I don't, uh, my guess, I don't hear a lot of people talk about anchor points, at least on mandolin. Um, I'm guessing what, you, what they're talking about is kind of physical anchor points rather than kind of purely musical. So what, what the way I often think about anchor points is sort of like, is my pointer finger acting as a capo? Um, you know, so if you're playing like a closed position A major scale. My pointer finger is always on that second fret. And it's just like adding a capo to that second fret. And then... Whoa. So my pink finger is taking the place of that capo, and voila. So that I think of that as like an anchor point. Um, same sort of stuff with that kind of more bluegrassy sound. I again think of my pointer finger as that anchor point. That's my guess about what people are talking about is kind of like a finger that really is kind of staying in one spot and kind of anchors all of the music that's going on around it. Oh yeah, so uh, Alan says sometimes I get try to get my fingers used to a tune on octave mandolin before going back to mandolin. Yeah, that definitely will make the mandolin feel... Uh, nice and fast and easy to manage um those ffcp uh exercises i was talking about they're so kind of intensive on kind of your left hand that often i would find i would practice those for five minutes and then go play a tune and be like ah oh, i can do this where i would like kind of struggle with the tune then do a little bit of ffcp go back to the tune and it's like oh my hand's all stretched out now this seems like a breeze compared to when I first started. Gibby asked, can you teach Tuttle's Reel? I would love to teach Tuttle's Reel. I'm pretty sure it's on my list of tunes to make lessons of. Um, I, I don't remember how it goes off the top of my head, but I know it's a good one. That I, would, I would love to teach it. Thanks, Ryan, for the super chat. Really appreciate 
the support and any way that people support me uh there's the super chat there there's some links in the description to a paypal donation and there's a bunch of patrons here so you can also support me on patreon where you get access to lessons early patron only live streams that are a little more uh chilled out and i can dive a little more deeper in depth on some of these questions i do patron only live streams or just by watching and playing mandolin and putting more music out in the world that's good too um certainly not required to donate but greatly appreciated uh for all that do james says at the start of COVID, i was balancing balancing seven instruments <laughs> yeah uh but when i decided to tone it down to three i saw a lot of improvement i've made mandolin the priority and bookending with guitar and fiddle it definitely can be helpful to you know i found i found myself at the beginning of covid being like not really fired up about playing mandolin so i kind of did the opposite and i was like i'm just gonna like kind of you know piddle around with a, like as many different instruments as possible just to see if i can like have fun playing music on my own so i got into like a lot of electric instruments and pedal boards and amps and pedal steel is a very kind of uh intellectual instrument as far as my brain thinks about it and um so I, yeah i think you know it's natural for instruments to come and go and priorities to change um so don't you know i would say mostly don't worry about it and just kind of gravitate towards what feels natural and what feels fun Nice, Ryan's got guitar, mandolin, and fiddle as well. Yeah, it's hard to find, and says can't really find time for fiddle now. It'll happen. Rick from Michigan, good to have you here. You probably got the rain that we we were sitting in in Oregon for a while. And if it's anything like the way things are going here, we've got a couple beautiful days coming. Uh, Hopefully they're coming for you as well. Bluebird says, I've used a banjo capo on the mandolin to use the same three chords I'm comfortable with, but in a different key. Example, G chord played in the capo on the second fret becomes an A. Yeah, capos are really handy that way. Um, I think there's a lot of kind of negativity towards the capo in the mandolin world because Bill Monroe didn't use one. And in a lot of like bluegrass, you know, you're really kind of using a lot of closed shapes so it's less you know you're not relying on those open strings but i love using a capo on a mandolin especially like you know capo on the fourth fret get all those open strings in the key of b How to use a capo is a great skill for working out how fretboard boards work because you can be like oh yeah my finger is being the capo so even we are like i need to play an a which is two above g so i'm just gonna like kind of transition things up the fingerboard or okay if i need to play an f like where do i find the capo spot for that well, i can do if i'm in g, if i play a g chord and i need an f then you got a capo on the 10th fret which is way too high so let's see, what else could we do? We could play out a D, D, G, and A. And then we can go D, E flat, E, F. So you can put a capo on the third fret and play out a D. And you get F. Oh, great tunes. The Orphan, Farewell to, oh, Whaley, Wally, Whaley Range. Oh, okay, I see. So Keith was talking, when we were talking about E minor to F sharp minor. Yeah, that is a good sound. I don't know that many F sharp 
minor tunes. There's a couple I follow along with, but I don't know the names of any of them. Maybe one of them is that Farewell Whaley Wally range. <laughs> I haven't thought about The Orphan in a long time. It's a great fucking dramatic tune. How about decode the standard, memorize it as do, re, mi, and then move it around? Yeah, that's another way to think about it. Uh, Ursuna says, so it's basically like your starting point, locating all the noi the notes, all the notes of the tune from that one fret. Yeah, I think, you know, that kind of uh, anchor point, when I think of the term an anchor point, I'm thinking about like a physical spot where one finger sits and kind of everything else moves around it um, so ffcp is another good example like you can play it's a great way to kind of work on some fretboard mapping as well we're gonna play the key of d or a d scale um s starting from the same note this d on the g string seventh fret but we're gonna do it four different ways use, using a different finger as our starting maybe you could say anchor finger so here's D starting with the pointer finger. And then here's that same scale, same notes. If you had your eyes closed, you'd have no idea, but I'm now starting with the middle finger. Or starting with the ring finger. Whoa. starting with the pinky need to adjust this camera a little bit it's a little too bright how was that that's better all right we are getting wow today flew by lots of great questions Nice in-depth questions. Let's all get it. Make sure you got your mandolin out. We're going to play a little bit of that lilting banshee um, after I answer these last couple questions, and then we'll go along our way and have a nice weekend. Let's see. Joe has a great point. Learned violin as a kid. Standard notation, open strings, and second finger are on spaces. First and third finger on lines. And that's how you read today. Yeah, that's definitely, you know, kind of thinking about where the lines and spaces are in standard notation. Very helpful um, to kind of have little tricks like that. Any favorite waltzes? Yeah, I'll play a waltz and then we'll do some... Uh... Yeah, it's been a really kind of talking, heavy, kind of deep intellectual round. I like it. Um, a waltz. I play this tune. It's not on my website. It's a tune I learned off of an Andy Cutting and Chris Wood album. I can't remember what it's called. I feel like it's called like Waffle Waltzin or something. It's uh.
<laughs> I'm gonna be part more one time. Let's play a little bit of Lilting Banshees. So get your mandolin out and tuned up while I figure out what the name of this tune is and what album it's on so you can actually find it later rather than saying, here's a tune. Good luck. Um, oh, it's got to be on... Let's see here. Yeah, it is Waffle Waltzen. <laughs> W-A-F-F-E-L... W A L T Z E N, all one word. Uh, it's so it's Chris Wood and Andy Cutting off their album Lusignac. Lusignac. I don't know how to say it. L U S I G N A C. They're one of my favorite duos. Button accordion and guitar and fiddle. That doesn't sound like a, a duo, but Andy plays uh, button accordion. Chris Wood plays guitar, fiddle, viola, um, and it's one of my favorite groups of all time so there's a, a waltz that you can't find on my website um thank you joe for the super chat and robert says if you haven't already you should check out gary nava's mandolins i've heard of them but i've never run into one would love to all right let's play a little bit of that uh whatever that tune is the tune of the week lilting banshee so um, I'll start out by playing the melody, you play the chords, then I'll play the chords, you play the melody, you know the drill. Um, if you don't know the tune, see if you can pick a little up. If you do know the tune, see if you can challenge yourself with some ornaments, things like that. So here we go. I'll play the melody. Thank you. 
I tried to go into Lark in the Morning. I still can't do it. But uh, awesome. There's the tune. It's a classic that a lot of folks will know. So if you don't know that one and you like Irish music, it's a good one to learn. All right. What should we play as uh, next week's tune of the week? Maybe an old-time tune? I don't know. Throw out some ideas there. I'll pull up the handy-dandy tune checker from Denise, who keeps me gloriously organized when it comes to this sort of thing. The play. Oop, nope, not that one. How do I find this play along? Let's see. I'll look through here, let a couple ideas run through. East Tennessee Blues. Have we done that yet? Oh, we have not done that at a live stream. James. James has got it. East Tennessee Blues, it is. Big Ankle Rag is also good. Let's do East Tennessee Blues. Have I done Big Ankle Rag? Just for next time. I have not. Cool. Um, Robert says, finally caught on one of your live sessions. It's 5 a.m. Wow. All right. Good morning. In Australia, not my usually jamming time. Yeah, me either. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, thanks, Robert. Sorry that uh, you're just catching Or maybe you caught earlier but if you're just getting here sorry that it's uh the end but if you ever miss one of these you can always watch them back later thank you so much roaring barman that's a great tune i don't have that on my website i don't think but oh is that a good tune that's a feisty one um yeah thanks everybody for tuning in thank you all for the support uh keep don't put the mandolin down just because i'm done with my live stream uh keep picking and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.